Welcome to Nashville, where there's still a buzz about the Tennessee Titans upsetting the Ravens to advance to the AFC title game. And today, Stephanie White, the head coach for Vanderbilt, says, why not us? As they host the fourth-ranked South Carolina Gamecocks here in Memorial Gym. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us alongside former Tennessee standout Andrea Carter. I'm Brenda Van Lingen. So, Vandy off to its best start under Stephanie White, despite the doubters, but today their biggest test is they face South Carolina. Well, coming into this season, Vanderbilt was picked to finish at the bottom of the SEC. Going into Sunday's game against Georgia, they hadn't beaten the Bulldogs since 2011. They got a win on Sunday. They're in the middle of the SEC. They're looking to defy the odds again against a young, talented South Carolina team. And we'll talk a lot about those young players, but let's focus on the Vandy leading scorer, the 6'5", junior Mariella Fasula and Mariella Fasula is very unorthodox but that's what makes her so great she leans she shoots with one hand she goes around the defense but it makes her so tough to guard and that's why she's had such success during her time in the SEC South Carolina is going to have to shut it down this afternoon and for South Carolina a lot of people had the question how long will it take this number one recruiting class to have an impact on the SEC the answer immediately and they are led by Aaliyah Boston, who's been tremendous. And Don Staley has another superstar in the making when it comes to Aaliyah Boston, if she's not already considered a superstar. She has great hands, highly skilled. She blocks shots into the stands. And my favorite thing about her game is that she doesn't get rebounds because she's taller than everyone. She gets rebounds because she outworks everyone, which is so rare when you have a freshman coming in that's already had such great success from the high school level. She's coming off a game where she had 25 rebounds in their win over Arkansas. And South Carolina, coached by Don Staley in her 12th year with the Gamecocks, 20th overall, already a Hall of Famer in the Naismith Hall of Fame in the Women's Basketball Hall of Fame as a player. She coached the Gamecocks to a national championship in 17. She's our USA Basketball Olympic coach. And she's gotten her teams off to tremendous starts this year. And this has been so fun to watch with South Carolina that they come out like they're on fire. And the best part about it is they have the depth to play a full 40-minute game. So if you're Vanderbilt, you cannot let yourself get in a hole because South Carolina can outlast you, and it's way too hard to come out of that. And that's outscoring teams 24-12 to 12 in the first quarter. So Stephanie White will need to have her team prepared to play. A National Player of the Year leading Purdue to a championship as a player, of course, took the fever to the finals as the youngest coach to do that and has had finally getting her traction here at Vandy. And one thing that she loves about this team and she told us is she finally feels like she has the athletes to compete in the SEC and this is the best Vanderbilt team that she's had as far as success goes so far. Andy, 12 and 4 on the year. They've started SEC play. 2 and 1. South Carolina comes in their only loss of the year to Indiana. They're 15 and 1. They are 3 and 0 in conference play. The SEC wins for South Carolina. They beat Kentucky at home. They won at Alabama and then hosting Arkansas won their last game. They're averaging well over 90 points a game, Dre, in SEC games. You know, I mean, it comes from how great their offense is because they have so many options on the offensive end. It's Aaliyah Boston, Zai Cook, Ty Harris, stuff. Welcome inside Memorial Gym in Nashville as we are ready to start between South Carolina, the fourth ranked team in the country, and Vanderbilt off to its best start under Stephanie White alongside Andrea Carter. I'm Brenda Van Lingen, and we're looking forward to how the young Vandy team competes. And Andrea, this first quarter, so important. And South Carolina is dominating the first quarter action. If you're Vanderbilt, you have to get off to a good start, and it comes with the defensive end first. That one, an empty possession for South Carolina on their first one. So Vandy will get the basketball there in their home whites. As you take a look, Hall, Cambridge, the sophomore great defensive player leading the conference in steals. Washington Newby and Fusala, their leading scorer at over 15 points a game, the center inside. 
There's Fusla, turns, too strong. And even in that last possession, they didn't get a basket, but I like the movement that Vanderbilt is starting with on the offensive end. Three freshmen and a couple of seniors in the lineup for South Carolina, Herbert Harrigan and Harris. And they get the ball inside to Boston, who has been incredible this year in her freshman campaign. Already scoring down low. Look out for Vanderbilt to send someone and double, especially off of Newby. That's one of the options they were working on this afternoon if Boston gets going. She's coming off a game, Boston, where she had 25 rebounds to go along with 19 points in their win over Arkansas. Too strong for Cambridge. Well, you mentioned those 25 rebounds. Ten of them were offensive rebounds. And that's one of the things that makes her so dangerous. She's scoring on 63% of her offensive rebounds, whether it's a bucket or a foul. She's strong to the rim that time. Didn't need an offensive rebound that time. For a freshman, her ability to play physical and play through contact is so impressive. Bree Beal with the steal and scores on the left side. And a timeout going to be called by Vandy after the quick start for South Carolina. They're up six to nothing here in Nashville. This is a great start on the season for Vanderbilt. They were preseason picked at the bottom of the league, but they've been terrific. But this is what South Carolina does, fast starts. Well, Vanderbilt's been defying the odds. Going into Sunday's game against the University of Georgia, they hadn't beaten the Bulldogs since 2011. They got the win against Georgia. They're trying to defy the odds again against a young, talented South Carolina team. And that young South Carolina team is led by Aaliyah Boston, one of three freshmen in the starting lineup and she's already had a big impact on this game. And right here, she's just getting the basketball, which I'm so impressed by her physicality, controlling the dribble, getting to her spot. And even if Vanderbilt sends a double, like we see here, she still finishes through contact. So send the double, don't send the double. We've already seen success from Boston. Well, she has been averaging a double-double in SEC games. You see her numbers in the Arkansas victory, and she's just one of the three freshmen that start for South Carolina. Yeah, and looking at those numbers, that incredible stat line in the Arkansas game, out of those 25 rebounds, 10 of them were offensive rebounds. She worked so hard on the offensive glass, getting her position, getting where she needs to be to get the ball, and she's scoring on 63% of her offensive rebounds. That's what makes her so dangerous. And we know that South Carolina has these kind of starts. They've been doing it all season long, and they've played more top 50 RPI teams than anybody in the country and still with great starts. I think their first quarter is really what makes them so dangerous in their game against Arkansas on Sunday. You know, Arkansas has sharp shooters, but they got in such a big hole in the first quarter, they couldn't claw themselves back. And if you use your quick math, that's an average of 24 to 12. They are outscoring opponents in the first quarter. Second turnover of the game for Vandy. And Vanderbilt going into their 2-2-1 full court press just to slow down South Carolina. And they're also falling back into that 2-3 zone. Gamecocks have scored on their last three possessions. Make that four in a row, Ty Harris. And too tall for Fasula. Ty Harris, going back to that shot, she's been one of my favorite players since her freshman year. Her patience, she picks her spot, she knows when she needs to score, and that might as well be a layup. That wide open up a three. Vanderbilt said coming into this game, we're gonna give contested long shots. That's not contested enough for Harris. She's contributed to a third of South Carolina's offense in the last two SEC games with her combination of points and assists. Boston going to work, too strong. Kasula picks it up and hands off to Chelsea Hall. Vandy's had three turnovers in a row, need a positive possession. High low to Kasula and she finally gives them their first basket. Great decision by Chelsea Hall. South Carolina trapped the ball screen. She dribbles out of it, finds the open player, make one extra pass for the layup. 
Harris with another pull up. Hall pushing ahead. Hall pulls up. Back to back baskets for the Commodores. One thing Stephanie White said was Chelsea Hall needs to have a great floor game. Running the team, taking care of the basketball, that's two good decisions back to back. From the top of the key, that one rims in and out for Cook. The freshman who's been averaging almost 19 points a game in their first three SEC games. And then how about that for Vandy? Three baskets in a row. This time it's Coy Love who's coming off her career high against Georgia. We talked to Stephanie White about Coy Love. She said that Coy is the first player that Stephanie can really coach and really get after, and she wants to be great. Cook slices inside to Boston. Too long. Battling. And it will be... Vanderbilt basketball. So they were down nine to nothing and three straight baskets. But it starts with the play of Chelsea Hall. She kept her dribble in that trap, found the open player, and then just finding her spots. Nobody picks her up. Okay, I'll take that shot. She's the leader of the team. She's the floor general. They need her to keep playing that way. Fasulo double team. Strong through, but she's going to be called for the travel. South Carolina with the quick double team there. And that's something that they talked about in practice. They wanted to give Aaliyah Boston a chance to guard her one-on-one, -on -one, but since Vanderbilt scored back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back possessions, they sent the double. Gamecock started hot three of their first four, but they're one of their last six. And they've had more trouble scoring since Vanderbilt fell into this 2-3 zone. The most important person in the zone is the one that just got the foul, Autumn Newby. First foul of the game. Newby, the 6'2 junior. Why is she the most important person in that zone? She's the most important because of her communication. And when you're in the middle of the zone, you have to tell everyone around you the cuts that are coming because they can't see what's coming their way. And she's the most vocal on Vanderbilt's team, so they actually swapped her with Vasula and put her in the middle. Herbert Harrigan with the offensive rebound and put back. The Commodores have made their last three shots in a row before that one was blocked. The offensive rebound against that zone defense. You have to be so careful against South Carolina. That's a contested shot, but Kiki Herbert Harrigan is active. She's got long arms. You have to get in front of her and push her back. Nowhere to go for Coy Love over to Fasula. Gamecocks chase it down. And the three-pointer that time by Ty Harris. She does such a solid job at balancing, running the team, finding her teammates, and picking her spots to score. It's what makes her so dangerous. Lily Carter into the game. Bree Beal, no one stopping Beal, but the nice block by Coy Love. That is the future of the SEC. Both of those two players, two solid freshmen, Bebeal, Brebeal, grabbing the rebound, taking it full court. But Coy Love, she plays with a chip on her shoulder. She's the type of player that wants to compete. You know, we talked about talked to her coming into this game, and she said, I just want everyone to see how hard we work and what we're capable of, and she's leading them. That one gets away from Harris, and a backcourt violation. Yeah, Koi Love in her first three SEC games, averaging almost 17 points per game. And she's been coming off the bench. Stephanie White says she's the type of player that has to get a feel for the game, see how they're doing things, and see what she needs to do first before coming in and being that spark. And it's not just her energy, it's her skill set. She is talented, she can score, and she plays strong on defense. Cambridge off the mark. Here come the Gamecocks. Oh 
mentioned, South Carolina has been on a tear here to start conference play. They're averaging over 94 points per game in their wins over Kentucky, Alabama, and Arkansas. Five on the shot clock. Beal blocked, but fouled. Going to call the foul on Lily Carter. And this is one thing you'll see Bree Beal do often. If she feels like she has a size advantage, she'll go down low and post up. And she's really good at drawing fouls. That's something Dawn Staley said she could do in high school. She draws a foul there. Beal connects on the first free throw. Well, Wednesday, John Calipari and number 14 Kentucky traveled to Columbia to take on Frank Martin's Gamecocks. Kentucky has dominated this rivalry the last 10 years, winning 5 of 6 and 11 of 13. 6.30 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. And off the missed free throw, the rebound and putback for South Carolina, their largest lead of the game. Harris pulls up too strong. So South Carolina started on a 9-0 run. Vandy came back and scored six straight points, but it's an 8-0 run right now for the Gamecocks. They can't add to that, and then Saxton picks up the foul on the rebound. And that was a frustration foul from Saxton. Vanderbilt's having more success against, or South Carolina is having more success against Vanderbilt's man-to-man, -man, primarily because they're getting out-jumped, out-rebounded. Vanderbilt has to try and match them as far as their athleticism goes. And some of that comes with timing and awareness. So let's talk offense. What does Vandy need to do to score against the South Carolina defense? Well, I think one of the biggest things they have to do is stay patient. They can't let South Carolina's pressure speed them up and force them into bad decisions. So solid cuts, solid screens, and patience on offense is how Vanderbilt's going to have success. Saxton picked up her second foul. Ami here, another freshman, redshirt freshman, checks into the game to replace Saxton. Love off the mark. Harris pushing ahead, probing the defense. Little pump fake, no good. And that's a possession that Vanderbilt is okay with. A quick shot for South Carolina on the offensive end, secure the rebound, and then be aggressive when they bring it back. Love breaks the 8-0. Run for South Carolina. Herbert Harrigan can't quite get a hand on it. Pushing out ahead to Love. Coy Love off the backboard too strong. Boy, you have to love the way the freshman plays, though. Well, she's just so competitive. And even that last play, she didn't make the basket. But her body control, that's something that a lot of freshmen don't have. When you come into the SEC, you start to play fast. You get out of control. She has great body control, even though she missed that shot. Well, it's been a game of runs so far. South Carolina's been hot and cold. They're 0 for their last four. Vanderbilt again switching up their defenses. They're going to mix it up all game long just to keep South Carolina on their toes. Another reason they went into the zone, too, they don't feel like they have a solid matchup for Grissette. You know, Grissette got moved to the three spot, used to play the four spot for South Carolina. Vanderbilt does not have a one on one matchup for her. Boston back into the game, muscles it up inside. It's a 19-8 lead for the Gamecocks. Love, boy, a lot of physical play there. Uh, me here was able to get a block from the corner. And bodies all over the place. Look at Aaliyah Boston just doing her extra work, and she's pointing. That's one thing that Don Staley talked to us about. They said she plays like an old pro. The way she communicates, she wanted the basketball. Henderson got a steal on the baseline inbounds and was able to score the quick layup. 
foul on Henderson. That's her first, the team's third of the first quarter. We're about right on track with South Carolina's typical first quarter. They have outscored opponents 24 to 12 in the first quarter all season long, and they bury teams and get them in a hole early. That's what we're seeing today. And what makes it so dangerous is this season, South Carolina has the depth. So once they get you in a hole, they can also outlast you the rest of the game, and it makes it really difficult to come out of it and regain the lead. Not much difference between the game clock and the shot clock. Ow! Paul is fouled on the jumper, and she'll go to the free throw line with 5.7 left in the first quarter. She gets around the screen. Nice hesitation move to set up the jump shot. That's how she draw that foul. Zaya Cook picked up the foul. Paul short on that, even though she's Almost an 83% free throw shooter on the day. It's her 21st birthday today. And she makes the second, has three. South Carolina, a last opportunity on the run. Too strong for Cook. That's the way we'll end the first quarter. South Carolina up 21 to nine. And Dropping in with Drea. My partner had a pretty good conversation earlier with Ty Harris. That's coming up. You can't sweat? I mean, okay. You can't sweat? I'm just saying, I'm not sweating yet. South Carolina up by 12 as we start the second quarter. We've got a great feature this year you're going to enjoy. It's called Dropping in with Drea. All right, ready? We got better different ab, ab, ab exercise. Come on, let's do Russian twist or something. Russian twist? That was too easy. <laughs> Fine, ready? All right, ready? We're gonna do 10. All right, ready, go. What's been the hardest season of your career so far? Um, junior year. Why? Our goat left. Asia Wilson. Okay. So I had to take on a new role. What do you mean? I had to be a better leader, and we had a younger team, new people, new faces. Yeah. So I had to take on that. Okay, stop. Now we gotta go. My point because go. you stopped. Oh, okay. My point because you stopped. So it's it. one to one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> So actually, let's just be clear, that wasn't our original ab exercise. We'll see the original one a little later. It was too hard for her. Oh. But fun way to interview Ty Harris and get to know her a little bit. And I've been following her since her freshman year. And she said hardest season of her career was her junior year because she lost the GOAT, greatest of all time, Asia Wilson. And then coming into this year, though, she still had to step up and be a leader to lead this talented freshman class. We'll have more of that in the second half, so you want to stick around and showing off your abs, girl. Listen, I actually didn't tell her we were going to do ab exercises. I told her dribbling, so she came in a little unprepared, and she told me today she's sore. <laughs> so I made her work a little bit. Not too sore, though. Don't tell Don Staley. Yeah, that made me sore watching. <laughs> well, Ty Harris has been around since her freshman year, took over that point guard position halfway through her freshman year, leading South Carolina to a national championship. And now she is the veteran with a lot of young players around her. Fasula too strong. Been very impressed by Leah Boston's defense on Mariella Fasula. She's so unorthodox and usually would draw fouls. But Leah Boston's playing straight up on that end and making her score over. Boston had six points in the first quarter, misses that one. Bandy doing a nice job, though, keeping her off the offensive board because she does, does that extremely well. That is her specialty. And one thing I noticed watching Aaliyah Boston is how she moves. It's almost like she's on defense. She's looking to create space to get those offensive rebounds. Tipped by the South Carolina defense. Six turnovers already for Vandy, but stolen right back. Here comes Jordan Cambridge. That's Cambridge's specialty, getting steals. She's got quick hands, and Stephanie White said she has go-go gadget arms, and that helps her get those steals. Yeah, she leads the SEC in steals, but she turns it over right into the hands of Henderson. And what I don't love about the play by Cambridge, the, the pass is one thing, but you can hustle back. 
get that layup, distract her, at least make an effort. Don't let one bad play turn into two bad decisions. Hall off the backboard. Chelsea Hall, the athleticism and the skill that Stephanie White needs. She's been a pillar in building this program. Nice pass, though, short for Ami here. Such a unique situation set up here at Memorial Gym. SEC fans have seen this for years, but Don Staley is actually sitting on their bench under the Vandy offense, but Stephanie White is up patrolling the sideline. Stephanie White coming all the way to half court, all the way back. I remember playing in this gym, and it's difficult. When you're on the other side of the court, it is so hard to hear your coach, to hear your teammates. It almost takes them out of the game. You have to know <laughs> what you're doing. You have to know what the game plan is and what you're executing on the offensive end. I, I think that the South Carolina players could hear Dawn from the other end. Probably. I think they know her voice. She'll say stuff in shoot-around at a normal tone, and everybody hears it. Everybody stops. It's so funny to watch. <laughs> Blocked a couple of times. The shot clock down to 13. And then this time, Demi Washington is able to draw a foul. Good persistence for Vandy. Nice job of Demi Washington. Really just sticking with the play, but I like the use of the shot fake. You always want to be the second player to leave the floor. So a me here. It's tough. That's physical. That's the SEC for you. Mm -hmm. Me here picks up the the foul. Washington has not been to the free throw line very many times this year, just six of eight as she misses the first one. We talked to Stephanie White about Washington, and she's a great defender, a great rebounder, and anything they get from her right now on the offensive end is a bonus. Cuts the lead to 11. Stephanie White up directing the defense for the Commodores. Harris. He here with the offensive rebound. No, Boston right there to clean it up. That's one of the harder parts about playing a zone. It's so much more difficult to find a player and box out because you don't have one player. You have an area, so you have to be aware and know who's around you, especially if it's Boston. Autumn Newby muscling it up on the offensive rebound and putback. Boston, Aaliyah Boston already with eight points for the Gamecocks. She averages over six offensive rebounds per game in SEC play. There she picks up that one. Henderson misses. Vandy with an opportunity to cut to single digits. All puts it up and does just that. And that's what Stephanie White likes to see. Persistency on the defensive end and then control on the offensive end. Well defended by Newby inside, and it gets the entire Vanderbilt team off the bench. South Carolina led 21 to nine as we started the quarter. A 7-4 advantage here in the second for Vandy, and now a 9-4 advantage to pull them within seven. And it starts with the play of Chelsea Hall. Last two possessions, solid decisions on the offensive end, being aggressive, looking to attack. Boston at the elbow. Ami here, tied up. And Love comes away with it. Love crosses over. And blocked by Ami here, stays with it, and scores! Yeah. 
And this is what Stephanie White said the next level for Vanderbilt is we need to expect to win. We need to expect to make shots and have energy like we are a winning basketball team. We're seeing that right now. This is the closest Vandy has come since they were down six to nothing to start the game. And a nice pass at the rim of me here able to score in traffic. Masula with a nice little hook in the lane brings it back within five. Solid defense by Vanderbilt, but you have to be thinking boxing. And it's a turnover for South Carolina. Vandy will have it. They're up five. They've outscored South Carolina 13 to 6 this quarter. Well, it started with their floor general making a good decision with the floater so she doesn't get her shot blocked. And then the superstar competitive freshman. Block my shot. I don't care. I'm getting it and going back up. And their unorthodox post player. However you can score, Mariella Fasula, you just put that ball in the basket. Vanderbilt, all the hype. Vandy recovered in the second quarter. They only had nine points in the first quarter, already 13 in the second. And it's really come from their effort. Autumn Newby sticking with the play, and Stephanie White told Chelsea Hall, you're not going to be able to get to the basket. Use your jump shot. Use your floater. Coy Love showing her skill on the offensive end, and Mariella Fasula, that unorthodox, one-handed, around-the-defense mm -hmm. shot. Vanderbilt storming back, started with their energy. Chelsea Hall leading the way with nine points for the Commodores. Coy Love with six. Let's take a look at how the numbers have shifted here in the second quarter. I've been very impressed by Vanderbilt. From the first quarter, they struggled, had some turnovers, couldn't get anything going on the offensive end and on the defensive end. Missed a couple of box outs. Aaliyah Boston's getting easy baskets. Their second quarter energy and their ability to fight back has been impressive. Not easy to do against the fourth-ranked team in the country. A fourth-ranked team as well that has a lot of depth. South Carolina is going to throw different lineups at you, different players at you. You have to be so aware of who's in the game and what they can do. Nice toss down low to set up Fasula. Sign of a strong basketball team is one that can execute out of a timeout, execute out of a break. Nice job by Vanderbilt. 12-2 run for the Commodores. And the answer, Herbert Harrigan from deep in the corner. She turned and looked at the Vanderbilt bench after she hit that one. We have seen her game expand from her freshman year to now. Her first three-pointer of the game. Love thinks about it. A nice rebound by Newby. Stolen away by Beal, and it will be a held ball. Possession arrow goes to the Gamecocks. And going back to that original bucket, the pick and roll, Fasula setting another double screen, and Chelsea Hall just eyes up, throws over the top for the bucket. Talk to Stephanie White at practice today. She said the importance of the fundamentals have really been stressed with this young squad. Yeah, and especially with Chelsea Hall, if you're going to lead your team, you have to be fundamentally sound, make good decisions, and not only make the decisions, but have the skill set to follow up with your decisions, and that was that pass. Newby commits the foul and right away is frustrated about it because that's her second. Frustrated with herself as she is now replaced by Jordan Cambridge. And the good thing is, with Autumn Newby out of the game, Leah Boston's not in the game. So they're not as mismatched as they would be if Boston was in. Cambridge picks up the foul. 
And it sends Kiki Herbert Harrigan to the line. Herbert Harrigan with five points so far today. And she makes the first free throw. Well, gymnastics takes over the SEC network every Friday night. This week, number three, Florida, and number 16, Missouri, square off in Columbia at the Hearn Center at 7 Eastern. Then it's number 13, Auburn, and number two, LSU from the Merivit Center in Baton Rouge. Friday Night Heights is also streaming live on the ESPN app. And Hall picks up the foul. So often we've seen it over and over, even on the free throws, the Gamecocks pounding the offensive glass. And that's just lack of awareness for Vanderbilt. You have to be ready to go, even on a free throw. South Carolina is coming for those offensive rebounds, especially you've got Bree Beal, Victoria Saxon, and Kiki Herbert Harrigan. That's athleticism, strength, and offensive rebounding right there. Both free throws made for Saxton. She's back in the game with those two fouls. Vandy had closed to within three. Love fading. And solid defense by Kiki Herbert Harrigan on Coy Love. And a terrific pass to Saxton, who scores and is fouled. Vanderbilt has to get someone on Ty Harris. If you give her too much time to look up the court, she's absolutely going to pick you apart. If you're Jordan Cambridge, you have to get up so she doesn't find Saxton down low. And completing the three-point play is Saxton. That's an 8-0 run now for the Gamecocks as Chelsea Hall picked up her second foul on the layup attempt. Over and over in this game, we've seen those nine and eight point runs for the Gamecocks. Execution on the offensive end is huge. South Carolina switched up their defense. Vanderbilt has to be aware. They're in a 1-3-1 one, one zone right now. What are you executing? What are you running to score? Masula off the mark, and it will be Gamecock basketball. It's important for Vanderbilt Get a stop, secure the rebound, and then if you come back on the offensive end, you have to execute without Chelsea Hall in the game. Mm -hmm. Blocked, but fouled by Fasula. That's her first foul. This is what Zai Cook is so great at, that explosive first step, covering so much distance for Fasula. You just have to be straight up right there. First point of the day for Cook. Well, coming up on the Auto Owners Halftime Report, Players of the Year so far in the conference, top freshman, and first half highlights and stats. Cook missed the second of two. Look at Coy Love bringing the basketball up the floor. Don't love the shot selection right there. And another foul going to be called on Vandy in transition. Smith into the game. Kaylin Smith picks up her first foul, and South Carolina in the bonus. We talked to Stephanie White and she said, our best transition defense is quality execution on offense. And mm -hmm. we just saw right there a bad shot by Koi Love. She can knock that shot down, but she can get that shot at any point. No teammates in offensive rebounding position. So South Carolina snags the rebound and that's how they draw the foul on the other end. Cook makes both free throws. So South Carolina was up by as many as 14. Vandy cut it to within three, but now the Gamecocks have Stretch the lead back to 14 again. And then Cambridge catches the ball out of bounds, so another empty possession for the Commodores. Rims in and out for Harris. 
Boston almost got a mitt on it, but it will be Vanderbilt's ball, and the, sh the game clock, or excuse me, the shot clock has been shut off. So Vanderbilt with an opportunity for the last possession. I'm going Coy Love or Mariella Fasula. And the foul on Bree Beal. Just the second team foul, though, of the quarter. This amount of time, Jordan Cambridge look to drive. Short on the attempt. Boston there to collect another rebound. Leah Boston, who has averaged a double-double in SEC play with eight points here in the first half to lead the way for the Gamecocks. Vandy had pulled within three, but South Carolina stretched it back out to 14 at the half. Welcome back to the Auto Owners Halftime Report. We're at Memorial Gym in Nashville, Tennessee, where the number four ranked South Carolina Gamecocks up 14 over Vanderbilt here at the half. Thanks for joining us once again. Alongside Andrea Carter, I'm Brenda Van Lingen. So in that first half, we saw a lot of scoring runs and South Carolina was up by as many as 14, but Vandy got back within three, but South Carolina was able to stretch it out once again. Well, I think the biggest thing that led to South Carolina being able to stretch that lead again was turnovers. Vanderbilt has to do a better job at taking care of the basketball. South Carolina, 12 points off turnovers, 12 fast break points, and this is just too easy. Bree Beal is a defensive specialist. You have to secure the basketball and protect the basketball. Casual passes are not going to work against South Carolina. They're such a talented basketball team. You have to make them work for their points, but we did see what Vanderbilt was capable of doing when they take care of the basketball, when they make good decisions, sticking with plays. This is Coy Love at her best, just staying persistent and sticking with it. Quality decision making by Chelsea Hall and then composure on the offensive end. That's what Vanderbilt has to do if they want to get the lead back in the second half and get a win. So let's talk about that effort for Vandy coming out in the third quarter. What do they first need to do? Well, the first thing they have to do is secure the basketball. They cannot let South Carolina get offensive rebounds and then take care of the basketball. So secure the basketball on the defensive end, take care of the basketball on the offensive end if they want to get back in this game. And you can see the numbers, the points off turnovers for the Gamecocks as they were able to convert on the other end. It was a real game of, of scoring runs. South Carolina went on an 8-0 run, a 9-0 run, and an 11-0 run in the first half of play. Led by Aaliyah Boston, eight points. She gathered up that last rebound to have four rebounds. She's averaging a double-double in SEC play and a double-double against ranked opponents this year. So she comes to play in the big games. I mean, there were a lot of question marks about South Carolina's freshmen and what they would be able to do against highly ranked teams and strong teams. And she has shown us all season long so far that it does not matter who she's playing against. She has her skill set, she has her effort, and she has her game. She picked up her first foul of the game. Trying to reach over Fasula to knock it away. They go right into Fasula. Boston clears the board. And she's battling Fasula down low. A three-quarter wrap to make it a hard pass and then playing straight up behind her. That's great post defense. Foul going to be called on Jordan Cambridge. This highly touted freshman class for South Carolina. They've been playing up to their potential. Yeah, and Aaliyah Boston, we've already talked about her so much. Zaya Cook, haven't seen much from her so far today, but she is athletic and a s explosive. Bree Beal, Letitia Emma here. I mean, they have a strong freshman class and they've been playing so hard. A foul on Autumn Newby inside. She picks up her third. And taking a look there at Bree Beal, 
She's been so exciting to watch. You know, we talked to Don Staley, and Don actually told us in the beginning when she saw Bree play, she wasn't amazed by her. It was actually the assistant coaches that saw her best basketball, but Don talked to her and her parents and just found a kid that she wanted on the program and it's not really one thing that amazes mm -hmm. you with her it's her total package and Don said now she wants all the Brie Beals she can get. Fasula with the miss Boston with another rebound. Yeah. And the score and the foul will send Zaya Cook to the free throw line. See, I just mentioned that we haven't seen much of Zaya Cook today, and then she comes with mm. this. A shot fake, hesitation, spin move, hang in the air and finish through contact. Just the composure, low dribbles. She has a high skill set. She could score the ball. Finishes the three-point play. You think about all the great players under Don Staley, and Zion Cook became the fourth Gamecock to record multiple 20-point games in SEC play, joining the likes of Kelsey Bone, Elena Coates, and Asia Wilson. I would say that is great company to be in. Harris with the basketball has now tied for second in career assist. Now she becomes the sole owner of second place in career assist for in South Carolina history, chasing that all-time assist leaderboard. And she is one of four players all time with 1,000 points and 500 assists for a reason. It's because of the pieces she has around her, but it's also because of the way she runs the floor. Ty Harris finding Boston down low. Well, the SEC Network will have you covered from New Orleans for the national championship game tomorrow. We kick things off with Marty and McGee at 2 Eastern, followed by the Paul Feinbaum Show. Then it's the SEC Nation pregame show at 6 that takes you right up to kickoff. And watch the game against Clemson with the LSU radio broadcast team. Finally, wrap up the day with our SEC Now postgame show with highlights, interviews, and complete game breakdown. You can always watch it all on the ESPN app from anywhere. Who you got in that one, Andrea? LSU Tigers. Yeah, I like LSU as well. Yeah. Two great quarterbacks in that game. Mr. Burrow, the Heisman Trophy winner. That's why I like LSU. Yeah, and I actually had a couple of friends from high school that played football at LSU. So I, I stick with the stick with the SEC, stick with the, the team I'm familiar with. So a 7-0 run here to start the second half for South Carolina. They're on an 18-0 run and make that a 21-0 run dating back to the second quarter. Zaya Cook has such nice form on her jump shot. The backspin on her shot, the high release, so smooth. She's got nine points now, only behind Aaliyah Boston, who's leading the Gamecocks with 10. Chelsea Hall gets loose for the bucket. Hall, the first player in double figures for Vandy. who is now number two all-time in career assists at South Carolina. And Beal fouled on her way to the hoop. Vanderbilt had success in the first half going from that full court press just to slow the clock down and falling back into the 2-3 zone, but you have to be aware of players cutting through the middle. That's too easy for Bree Beal. Fasula picked up her second foul as Stephanie White speaking with her freshman, Koi Love. In that relationship, Koi Love told us that she loves Coach White. It was the first thing she said when we asked her about their relationship. She said, we instantly clicked. Coach White understands me and my goals. Koi Love wants to play in the WNBA. She knows Coach White has been there, and they're working on how to get her there starting now. Corner. Carter. 
stepping through, and Zaya Cook drew the foul on the drive. Vanderbilt has to get someone to stop the basketball. A straight line drive from one end of the court to the other for Zai Cook is nothing but trouble. Nice job by the freshman at not stopping until someone gets in front of her. And she's going to the free throw line because it was a foul on the shot, but there's already five team fouls for Vandy here in the third quarter. And that's difficult because Vanderbilt this season has taken a lot of pride in their aggressive defense. That's something they've been able to hang their hat on and they get energy from the defensive end. When you're in the bonus, you have to be careful. Can't play as aggressive, or it's going to lead to free throws. Blocked by Herbert Harrigan. And right there, Kiara Pearl. Three players around you, and Kiki Herbert Harrigan trailing you. Maybe stop, give a shot fake, draw the foul. That is, that's like volleyball for Herbert Harrigan. Foul called away from the ball on Saxton. That's her third foul. And then an offensive foul. So a couple of fouls called with no ticks off the clock. One on South Carolina, this time on Vandy. The illegal screen called on Newby, and that's her fourth foul. And that is a huge huge break for South Carolina. Autumn Newby is athleticism. She's vocal. Her going to the bench is going to make it tough for Vanderbilt to get back in it. Zaya Cook banks it in. Cook now with 11 points. The high low blocked. Masula stays with it. Can't score it. And neither of those attempts hit the rim, so the shot clock stays at 12. It's been a tough day for Fasula inside. Well, South Carolina has definitely locked in on her, and I've been impressed by their help defense. Bree Beal on that last play, able to block the shot without the foul. She's able to turn and score their eight points now for the junior. Vanderbilt has to get more communication in the zone. I see Fasula talking, but she is the only one that's communicating out there. Foul on the shot will send Harris to the free throw line. Coy Love picked up her first foul. South, South Carolina has had a very tough schedule this year, and of all teams, in the country, they've played more top 20 or top 50 RPI teams, so have really challenged themselves once again this year. And Don Staley is such a genius coach, just setting her team up for success in the SEC with this schedule right here. And I was talking to Coach Jolette Law, their assistant. She had this scout today, and she told me, luckily, we've seen just about everything that we could see with our non-conference. We've seen zone, we've seen press, we've seen aggressive defenses, different post play on defensive ends. So they've really prepared themselves for the SEC with that non-conference schedule. It's going to stay on this end. You know, South Carolina lost to Indiana down in St. Thomas in the Virgin Islands, and that's the home island of Aaliyah Boston. I, I happened to be there, and there was the entire arena was filled with fans wanting to watch her play, and she got into foul trouble against Indiana, and it was a big part of why Indiana won that game because Boston didn't play much at all. But South Carolina came back and then ended up beating Baylor in that same tournament. And I think that was really impressive for South Carolina to lose a game that some people may have thought they shouldn't have lost, but Aaliyah Boston, like you said, going to the bench, but to come back from that loss, face a tough Baylor team and get that win, that's big. Harris picks up the foul. And Indi to Indiana's credit, they could potentially win the Big Ten Conference this year. That's not a bad loss. That's a very good team, but they certainly didn't have the services of Boston in that loss. Andy going to inbound it with 20 on the shot clock. Almost tipped away. Hall dives on the floor. 
Hall going to set things up. The junior. Five on the shot clock. Is Love aware? Two seconds. One, no. Shot clock violation. Well, Baylor beat UConn earlier this week. There's already been another upset in the top five today. So who's number one? We'll talk about it when we come back. Welcome back to Nashville, where South Carolina leads Vandy by 30. Well, there have already been three teams this year in women's basketball that have been ranked number one. Oregon at the start of the year, they were beat by Louisville. Stanford, when they were number one, beat by Texas. Then UConn beat by Baylor this week. So who's going to be number one this week? Well, this has been such an exciting season so far for basketball. And for me, I mean, coming into this week, I would have to go with Baylor, but we thought Oregon State could have been number one. They've been having a strong season, and then just today they lost by eight points to Arizona State. So the competition of women's college basketball has been so much fun to watch, and for that number one seed, mm -hmm. it's really up for grabs. So is it is it Oregon? Is it South Carolina? Will they be number one, or will Baylor leapfrog and go to number one. What do you think? Well, you know that some SEC fans are going to pull for South Carolina because they beat Baylor, but you have to take into account Baylor did not have Lauren Cox in that game, and she's a huge part of the Baylor team. You saw they had her when they beat UConn, and so, you know, I have no idea. I'm just glad I'm not on the committee that picks <laughs> the AP Top 25 because week to week it's just too difficult. Well, it shows the, the parity in women's basketball this year, and so much is going to happen in conference play in the next couple of months. It makes it fun to look forward to. But South Carolina taking care of business today on the road here in Nashville. Vanderbilt had closed to within three points late in the second quarter. It's been all South Carolina since then. Herbert Harrigan with the shot from range. The touch and the arc on her shot. That hit the rim soft, bounced right in. The way Kiki Herbert Harrigan's game has expanded, she now has a full skill set. She can score at the rim, she can shoot, she can pass, and she can defend on the perimeter. That's a Don Staley player right there. Mm -hmm. Combination of the seniors, Harris and Herbert Harrigan, along with the three freshmen that start, Cook and Boston and Beal, and then the strength of their bench as Harris takes a seat. It's just an interesting combination of veterans and freshmen on the South Carolina squad. And it's a great combination that's really working well together. I talked with Dawn Staley, and she said Zia Cook didn't know what shots were good shots or bad shots, and she challenged Ty Harris to show her every day. She said talk to her all the time. Zia Cook is a player you have to constantly communicate with. Dawn Staley passed that assignment to Ty Harris. The pass ahead to Cook. It's a high-quality shot right there. Yeah, that's one they'll take anytime, <laughs> anywhere. She just plays with so much composure. Really, if you look at all the freshmen, Bree Beal, Letitia and Amma here, all, all of them just play under control. They play with composure, and I think it goes to their senior leadership. They have seniors that let them know what's right, what's wrong, and what's expected of them. The runner. one thing Kiara Pearl can really bring to Vanderbilt. She was out for four games with concussion-like mm -hmm. symptoms, but she's another player that can score, and she's actually their most consistent three-point shooter. Herbert Harrigan scoring again. She's got 13. Love double clutches. It's blocked by Grissette. It'll stay here. Playing against South Carolina, you have to know that you're probably not going to get straight line drive layups to the basket. You have to have something more creative. You have to have a counter, a floater, or penetrate looking for that rotation, looking for an open teammate. They have so many shot blockers down low. So we talked to Steph White today. She knew what they were in for and how this team is growing. Basula scores inside, but just too much South Carolina today. 
And Vanderbilt is definitely still growing, like you said. They're getting the pieces that they need to put together the program that Stephanie White wants. And one thing that you have to take into account when it comes to building a program at Vanderbilt, you also have to have academic conversations. And that makes it a lot more difficult to get players in because you need athletes, but they also have to be willing to commit to the level of school and academics that they're going to get when they come to Vanderbilt. She talked about the fact they got Paul and Newby and started changing the athleticism of this team. And then Alexander, who we haven't mentioned today, Brene Alexander was leading this team in scoring, but after or in her seventh game, went out with an Achilles injury, and that was a big blow to Vandy this year. Oh, it was huge. You know, she went out in their first game in the Bahamas, and then they didn't really know yet how to adjust without her. And that's how they got their first two losses, because they were playing without their leading score. Carter short, the battle, and it will stay here. And Stephanie White feels like they're moving in the right direction. They, they're two and one coming into this game. They beat Auburn. They lost a disappointing loss at Florida, but then came back and won at Georgia before running into this buzzsaw. A terrific pass to set up Lily Grisset for the basket. She'll go to the free throw line. I've been impressed by Lily Grisset this season. Just moving to the three spot, Billy being willing to make an adjustment to her game, do what she needs to do to get playing time and a nice pass. Destiny Henderson showing off. So Vandy went on a 10-2 run back in the second quarter to draw within three. It was 27 to 24 at the time. But since then, South Carolina has outscored the Commodores 43 to eight. Vanderbilt, this is still a big test. We talked to Stephanie White about what she needs to continue to build a program, and it comes down to mentality. You know, if you believe you're a winner, you're going to play like you're a winner. And even, even being down this big, Vanderbilt has to fight. They have to keep themselves in it as far as energy goes. Grissette scored the layup, and Stephanie White called a timeout to gather the troops to talk about just that, the fight. And that's what she was impressed with. You mentioned that Georgia win after a disappointing Florida loss. She didn't feel like they had energy, especially on the defensive end against Florida. And looking year to year, you know, coming in to Vanderbilt, she didn't have the players or the pieces. And one thing she said was, you know, when I came in, we had a lot of shooters, but we didn't have any athletes. Now they have athletes, but they don't have that many shooters. So now that she has the athletes she needs on her team, she's going to have to start to get in some of those complimentary pieces, some knockdown three-point shooters in order to get a complete team. Well, Wednesday, John Calipari and number 14 Kentucky traveled to Columbia to take on Frank Martin's Gamecocks. Kentucky has been dominant in this rivalry the last 10 years, winning 5 of 6 and 11 of 13. Tune in at 6.30 Eastern right here on the SEC Network and the ESPN app. Never count out Frank Martin's teams, though. Kasula with a nice move. The way she controls the basketball with outstretched arms is so impressive. She does so many things that you tell post players not to do. She puts the ball low, she fades away, but somehow she scores. Lily Carter changing directions. And then a double team in the backcourt. So out of the timeout, Stephanie White wants to pick up the energy defensively. And even if the game may be out of reach, she wants to see this team play hard. And this is where they still have to execute on the defensive end. Saxton on the drive. 
I really like Victoria Saxton. Coach Don Staley called her Mother Hen. She said she's the leader of the team because she'll tell her teammates things that they might not say to each other, but she's going to tell them she's very right or wrong, black or white. She's going to tell you how she feels, and she'll lead the team. And she's a young player. Coach Staley said she really thinks Saxton's going to blossom next season. Her defense, her rebounding, but when that offensive confidence piece comes into play, she's going to have a special player. South Carolina's been getting the free throw line. That's something they do. They're fourth in the nation in free throws made this year. They are 17 of 22 so far. They continue to attack. Last possession of the third quarter for the Commodores. From the baseline, splashing it in is Washington. South Carolina heaves it up. Ty Harris and the Gamecocks have been dominant here in Nashville. And when we come up, though, we'll see who's dominant between Andrea Carter and Harris with a little ab workout. South Carolina up big as we start the fourth quarter, but Ty Harris had a chance to sit down or do a little ab workout with my partner, Andrea Carter, as we have dropping in with Drea. Up, under, okay, hold down. Up, under, five. Woo! Woo! Last question. Who do you model your game after? Um, let's see, let's see. I like Chris Paul. Why? He's a great point guard, and he knows when to pick and choose to score and he has great handles. He's nice, he's nice on the court. What do you think your strongest skill is in your role on the team? Like, what makes you so important to this team? Um, I would have to say just like the mental aspect of everything. Uh, like I, I learn things quick. And I, I kind of see like with our new freshmen now, like it's kind of hard for them to pick up on things. And I think that I got that easy when I was a freshman because I was thrown into the fire. So I think that was a nice little special gift I have. Coach Boy always told me that, like, you have a gift, you have a gift, but I never noticed, but now I do. People notice. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Ugh. Abs all right? Nope, on fire. <laughs> <laughs> I think I need to lay down. Whatever. She said her abs were on fire. I asked her today, and she said she was still a little sore, but <laughs> so good to catch up with Ty Harris and challenge her to some basketball ab drills. And she said she loves Chris Paul because he knows when to score, but he also finds his teammates. And she's such a perfect example of that. You put Elena Coates around her, Asia Wilson, any combination of players, Alicia Gray, three, you know, all-star freshmen that are starting with her. And she still just somehow knows what Coach Shaley wants her to do, knows what her teammates' roles are. And she's just such an impressive, high-quality point guard. Keeps her dribble alive, steps back, scores that one right on cue. Just, just like I talked about it. I mean, <laughs> she's like she hears me. Is that what you do when you work out your young people that you work out with? Those, those kind of... Uh... No, I don't think they're doing one foot fade away after the spin jump shots. That's, uh, <laughs> that's something that comes with time and work. Grissette scoring. No, I mean the uh, the ab workouts. That that look pretty tough. Oh, the ab workout. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I challenged some young players to do those ab workouts. It is hard. We didn't show it. We cut it just to be nice to tie. But she had a hard time with those. They were difficult. Right at Fasula. The execution will be big for Vanderbilt because. Even shots like that, that's a good shot. Under control, over the defense. But you have to be careful with those shots because if they don't go in, your team, you don't have anybody in position to rebound. South Carolina grabs those and runs to the other end. Herbert Harrigan going up high. Finishing now. She's got 15. She's so athletic. That's the second or third time we've seen her get so high to grab the basketball. South Carolina off to the races once again. That one got stripped away. 
South Carolina has been averaging 94 points per game in conference play. Stays here on this end. You know, you talked about the AP voters having a tough time right now as far as who's number one. Charlie Cream working on potential number one seeds. We got a little time before things start, but right now here's the early projections. And it's just so difficult because, you know, he picked Oregon State, but they lost today to Arizona State. And I think it's so up in the air, especially now that everything is in conference play. Every team, you know each other so well. The competition is so high. It's so hard to tell this season who's going to be at the top. And does UConn go back on to those number one seed lines? And Oregon State and Oregon going to have a, a killer schedule in the Pac-12. So tough this year. It'll be interesting to see how things play out in conference play around the country as Weselek into the game scores her first basket. This is a good opportunity for Weselek to get some minutes, get some playing time. She's only played in eight games so far this season, giving her an opportunity to get some experience. And South Carolina, the way they use their bench this season, they get so much production from their second and third string players. Love blocked inside by a me here, and it will stay here on the possession arrow. Newby back into the game with the four fouls. You mentioned what a key component she is in this team, especially defensively, and she's been in foul trouble today, which has been a problem for the Commodores. She's going to have to play with maturity for the rest of the game, under control. Can be aggressive on the defensive end, but she has to be aware of the four fouls. That one gets away from Vanderbilt, so it will stay on this end for the Gamecocks. Rims in and out for Cook. Cooks along with, uh, excuse me, she, she has 17 points for South Carolina. You notice the shirt that Stephanie White is wearing. It's Pride Day here at Vanderbilt. That's something that Stephanie White is very proud that Vanderbilt is taking a leadership role doing. And she said that this is something she's wanted to do for years, something that's very close and, and personal to her. And she feels very, very happy, feels very fulfilled that Vanderbilt has taken on Pride Day and said that, you know, college campuses are a place of, you know, being inclusive and loving everybody. And she said that pride was something that had been left off of that. And now this season, you know, she's really making a difference and creating change to give them an opportunity to feel like they're represented. Yeah, what a great initiative for Vanderbilt. You can see the pride that Stephanie White has in this initiative and that she is proud to work for this university. Carolina continuing to roll. Third foul on me here. And one thing I love going back to it being Pride Day, you know, Stephanie White said there are a lot of people before that knew her but may not have known her personally. And so they don't feel very affected by pride or issues or things that the pride community faces. So her being open and being authentic might change some minds of people that are like, hey, wait, I know Stephanie White. She's a part of that community. Maybe I should look at things in a different way. So hats off to Stephanie White for just being authentic. And I think she's authentic as a woman and authentic as a coach. And we just see that and feel that when we talk to her all the time. Very well said. And with that basket, South Carolina has scored 50 points here in the second half.
Cambridge. Beal fights off. Would be rebounder there in Chambers. She is such a strong player. You know, coming into the season, her freshman year, she didn't even really lift weights during high school, but just has a strong body. Now, me here now with eight points. I like Ami here's game. You know, she came to South Carolina early, um, and that's why she's considered a redshirt freshman. Came in January, had a knee surgery, wanted to recover, just very mature, making that decision, leaving Canada to come down and get some early work at South Carolina. That's been a tough. 21st birthday for Chelsea Hall, but she is leading the way for Vanderbilt with 15 points. Newbie collects the rebound. And Chelsea Hall will be able to walk away after these four minutes and feel good about her game. She made solid decisions. She sparked their you know, comeback in the first half. And she's really commanded and ran her team. South Carolina has just had too much for Vanderbilt as a whole. And the basket counts for Pearl. She'll be at the free throw line when we come back. South Carolina shooting 52% from the field. So much of that in transition as they've scored now 52 points here in the second half. And preseason, South Carolina picked to finish number one in the conference, but so many great teams and 11 of 14 have 10 wins already. And six teams in the AP Top 25, six players on the Wooden Award midseason Top 25, and one of those is a freshman on the entire list, and that's Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, South Carolina, one of five schools that have multiple players on that list. Ty Harris along with Aaliyah Boston on the Wooden Award midseason list, Top 25. Yeah, pretty impressive. The only freshman on the list is Aaliyah Boston. Yeah, and there have been discussions for, you know, SEC Player of the Year awards already. You know, Ryan Howard, Kennedy Carter was in the conversation, and there have been people talking about Aaliyah Boston as well. Even though she's a freshman, it doesn't matter. If she is dominant in the SEC, she's in the running. The strip. Nice work that time by Pearl continuing to hustle. Chambers too strong. Pearl from three. We mentioned first time back on the court after missing the last four games for Kiara Pearl. And scoring is Saxton. Nice pass by Lily Grissett. She's playing that three position this year, putting the ball on the floor, finding her teammates. Those are the guard skills that she worked on over the summer. Good ball reversal, setting up Newby inside, and she's fouled. So if you're, you're Stephanie White at this point, what are you looking to see from your team at this, these last couple of minutes to finish? Well, I think energy and attitude is going to be the biggest thing. Can they still keep their energy? Can they play with positive attitude sometimes in this game? And we've seen it before. Players get frustrated. They act out of character. And so for these last two minutes and 44 seconds, energy, attitude, and then make South Carolina work. Every basket from here on out needs to be difficult. It needs to be over a high hand, contested shots for South Carolina. And as we look at South Carolina, five players in double figures, led by Cook with 17. Herbert Harrigan, 15, right behind her. Don Staley has to be pleased with the fact that just came in and took care of business. Even though Vanderbilt closed within three in that second quarter, they've just been dominant since then. And that's a sign of a strong team to withstand a run. And you're, you're up by 14. And then a Vanderbilt comes storming back. And South Carolina didn't look faced. They didn't look bothered. They didn't, you know, do anything. They just stuck with it, kept competing, and it went right back to their game. And they expanded the lead a huge third quarter coming out of halftime. I don't know what Dawn Staley said to her team, but they responded big.
Henderson has it taken away by Cambridge. Pearl steps into a three. And that's what Kiara Pearl is capable of. She just came into the game shooting 45% from beyond the arc, but South Carolina just such balanced attack. Five players in double figures. Battling hard. Ami here draws the foul. A me here that needs to improve as she's shooting 46%. She bounces that one in as we look ahead at the South Carolina schedule. Coming up at, you're going to be at that game at Missouri. Yep, I'll be at Missouri and then Mississippi State, Georgia, Ole Miss, Tennessee. They'll face UConn on February 10th. So if you're South Carolina, though, there's no let ups. No matter who you're playing against, they need to play like it's the SEC championship because they're getting ready. They're a team that they want a Final Four. They want postseason, and every game coming up is huge, especially because they have so many players that contribute. If South Carolina, if you can have your starters get a big lead just like this game and then get your bench players in and get them experience, that's big down the road. Demi Washington bouncing that one in. That three-pointer earlier by Pearl, the first three-pointer of the game for Vanderbilt. It's not a strength of theirs, but hadn't made any. Thompson is a good three-point shooter off the bench, misses. Weselek. Cambridge ahead, and the finish for Chambers. And there have been bright spots in this game for Vanderbilt. They can't walk away from this feeling terrible. They had moments. They had strong. They went on a couple of runs, and they'll learn a lot from this game. They have Arkansas and Mississippi State coming up. So after this, mm -hmm. they can't hang their hats. They can't hang their heads. They have to get in the gym and get right back to work. Yeah, full week off, though, for Stephanie White's team. They don't play again until next Sunday, and we'll be here on the SEC Network for that game. Autumn Newby for Vanderbilt went down clutching her knee. And Don Staley going to come onto the court because Newby is in serious pain down here after that last possession. Boy, immediately she was screaming in pain and your heart just breaks to see that in the waning seconds of this game. Dawn Staley went right over to her. Vanderbilt has had a tough time with injuries, even going back to last season. Chelsea Hall missed some time on the court. Lily Carter this season. Brene Alexander. You know, Taylor Hutchins, a freshman, is out for the year as well. Hope that that's not what the situation is here for Autumn Newby. Newby, Newby, excuse me, with five points and eight rebounds on the day. The 6'2 junior. We talked about the energy and communication that she brings every day to this squad. Such an important member of this team. Gets. Oh, yeah. goodness. Weselek, the player from South Carolina, where that uh, Autumn Newby had her leg pinched in there. Let's see Marquez Webb coming over to help carry Newby off the court. Former Vanderbilt player now on the staff and you know, Stephanie White talked about Newby and said she's matured so much, her body language, her overall presence and energy. So you hope for a player like that, she's okay. And that 
winds it up as South Carolina beats Vanderbilt 93-57 here at Memorial Gym. A damper on things as Autumn Newby was carted off the court in those waning seconds. Terrific work by Boston and the entire South Carolina team taking care of business throughout and a dominating second half. We'll be back to talk to Don Staley after these Welcome back to Memorial Gym in Nashville as South Carolina dominates in this one, winning 93-57. to Aaliyah Boston with a terrific game once again for the Gamecocks. And she came out from the very beginning. Just, you know, Vanderbilt's plan was to make her score around defense. They weren't fronting her. They wanted her to show her skill set, and she did exactly that. Even when Vanderbilt sent double teams, Aaliyah Boston had the composure and the awareness, keeping the basketball high, getting offensive rebounds, just showing what she is capable of and why she has been so dominant so far this season. Non-conference and an SEC play. We've seen it all from Boston. Yeah, one of five players in double figures as we're joined by Don Staley. And this was a game in the second quarter where Vanderbilt had closed to within three, and then you went on the run and just went on to dominate. What did it take for your team to have that kind of focus today? I mean, I mean, it was uh, the, the, the focus is you're playing on the on the road in an SEC uh, team and an opponent, and it's it's hard. I mean, it, it's hard no matter how much you think your you know your team is playing well. Um, they're young, and this is a new environment for them. So sometimes it, it takes a little bit to uh, to adjust. We knew uh, Vandy would have a, a run in them. Um, we just turned the ball over, we made bad decisions, and they made us pay for it. And what was your message to the team specifically at halftime? Because the third quarter, it came, you came out, scored 36 points in that quarter. I mean, basically, we, we, wanted, to, we wanted to change how we were guarding their horns action um, because we had some difficulty with Fasula rolling on us. So we, we, we tried to adjust in that way. But we wanted to play fast. We wanted to make sure that we get shots at the basket and we get up and down the floor and get some easy bus, bu buckets. Uh, but mainly our, our, our defense was our, our key because we try to generate some offense from our defense. And you were able to generate that offense from your defense, and you got scoring from a number of different players. You've been averaging 94 points a game in SEC play. That's not easy to do in conference play. I mean, it's not. It's not. I mean, we've got a team that's playing really well together, and it is an example of it when, when you're sharing the ball and everybody's touching the ball, um, good things can happen. So every, as of right now, everybody's happy because everybody's touching the ball, <laughs> feeling the ball, and I got that from Kayla Davis. She said, I'm not, I don't necessarily have to shoot the ball, but I want to feel the ball early on. So, Kayla, the rule is your rule is in effect. <laughs> <laughs> and you said everybody's happy playing together, your starters, your bench players, your freshmen, your seniors. When did all that really start to come together? Well, I think early on. We, we just didn't know each other well enough. Um, th this team started playing pickup early in the summer, and they were playing against some of our uh, former players. They came back for camp, and – I knew it would be kind of special because of, you know, their desire to play pickup. Now, again, go back to Kayla Davis's day, days. They didn't want to play pickup. They were like, when we won a national championship, they were like, and coach, we won without playing pickup. <laughs> and, um, you know, but it, it started then and there. And then we started getting games under our belts. And it, 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 it took us a while to adjust, you know, because everybody goes into the mode of, what they used to be in, in high school, what they used to be um, their junior year, like Ty. You know, Ty is running the show for us. This does not work without Ty being the leader that she is, controlling the controllables, and then Kiki, in her own way, she leads. They allow her to lead in the way that she leads, and I, you know, I hope we just keep bottling this up and keep working hard and keep working on our our weaknesses and, and enjoy this because it's a little bit different than what we've ever experienced. All right. Well, we appreciate you stopping by. Thanks, Don. Thanks, Thank Coach. You. Thank you. And that's a good segue because Ty Harris with another terrific day, 10 points and six assists for the leader of this team will have a chance to bring her in here. And I think it's just so impressive at how she decides whether she's going to score or whether she's going to pass. And really, it's not just passing to her teammates. She finds her teammates in positions where they're able to score. She sets them up for success, leads them to the basket. And Ty, welcome. Just 
bragging on you and your game. You talked about Chris Paul and how he's your favorite and how he finds his teammates but knows when to score. How did that start to develop for you? Um, I don't know, honestly. I kind of just, like, watch basketball a lot. Uh, I watched my dad when I was younger. I mean, he was more of a scorer. He didn't really like to pass. But um, I like passing and just seeing my teammates be happy. How are your abs doing? I was wondering after you worked I'll out. I'll recover quick. Tell the truth. I'll recover quick. Tell the I'll truth. recover quick. <laughs> <laughs> I did take an L, but I recover quick. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. So your team, we talked to this about uh, Coach Staley, the mm -hmm. fact that you've been averaging 94 points per game in mm -hmm. conference play, that's not easy in this conference. How have you been able to do it? Um, Just running. Just running. Uh, we know the games are full of runs, and um, we try to create offense with our defense. And you've got – outstanding freshman and mm -hmm. you told me yesterday mm -hmm. that they actually like to listen what mm -hmm. has it been like leading this talented group um it's amazing just because they like to learn listen um they're ready to shoot score and uh they bring a competitive edge every every day to practice and um obviously to the game so it's really fun just to have them here yeah. and it's exciting to watch and you know we thank you thank so you so much thank you all right, thanks so much for stopping by. We appreciate it. Get Thank on you. with your teammates and you know, work on those abs. <laughs> work on your abs. Make sure. I'll see you again. We'll do it again. Okay, okay. I'm going to beat you. Let's all right, all right. Well, the final score here, South Carolina winning 93-57. to 57. Up next, SEC Now from New Orleans. Well, coming up next, the SEC Now team will get you set for LSU Clemson tomorrow night. They'll break down Joe Burrow and Trevor Lawrence. We'll have a feature on Clyde Edwards-Hilaire and look at the decade of the SEC dominance. No one covers the SEC like we do. You can also see it streaming live on the ESPN app. South Carolina with a big win. Up next, SEC Now from New Orleans. For Andrea Carter, I'm Brenda Ben Lingen saying good night from Nashville.